Hello everybody, Richard Owen here at Owen Automotive and we're back on my junk E-Type engine. So today I hope to get these pistons in. Luckily Jaguar numbered them and uh, gave us a lot of markings to show which way they go in the engine. So you don't really have to worry about these engines when you take them apart. You see down at the bottom of this piston here it says front, that's what goes forward. And this number five here, that means it's piston number five. G is the grade of the piston. Yeah, so these things are gonna be pretty easy to put in. I just have to do a few checks on the piston rings. I'm gonna test them for gap, like they say here in the manual. And Hastings want me to check them for the, um, what do they call, the groove depth. My dad has this nice tool here to fit them on. I'm gonna use some of the original old hardware. That's because this is my junk heat type engine. If there's a customer car, probably would refresh the rod bolts and nuts. But yeah, we're keeping this engine 100% original. So yeah, I'll show you how these things go back, back in there. Okay, just measured the piston ring compression gap there. Got about 20 thou, just pushed it down with a piston to make sure it was nice and parallel in the bore. That's in spec. And to make the Hastings guys happy, just stuck the rings in the grooves there, made sure they didn't protrude either. So yeah, we're good to go. Time to put the rings on the pistons. Uh, I got some with these dots on them there. That's for the tapered ring. That's the bottom compression ring. The manual states that the small end of the ring should be up towards the top of the piston. My dad's showing us how to use this expansion tool. This helps to not bend the ring as it goes on. There she goes, she's landed. So similar process, just take a ring without a taper on it now. It can go in any orientation basically, up or down. Okay, we are getting close. So the rings are on the pistons, they're set up correctly. My dad just wants me to oil up the wrist pins. If you see in the piston here, there's those two little holes. I'm just gonna drop some oil onto those, heat it up and try to turn it and get that wrist pin free. So that's the next job, and then we'll be putting these babies in. All right, getting ready to put the pistons in. This is it. Just cleaned out the bores one last time with a microfiber and some brake cleaner. My dad got the piston ring compressor tool right here, lightly oiled, ready to assist these babies back into the cylinder bores in which they belong. Just kind of cheated, put some orange dots to really guide us so we can't put the caps on the wrong way around. Put a little oil in the wrist pin area. You see that there's a little bit of oil down in there now to lubricate that area. And we're just going to check the gaps here, make sure they're all in the right spot, compress it down with a tool and drop them in. Okay, getting piston number one ready to go in, lubricating the bearing, got the compressor tool on there. Gonna drive her home down into this bore. You can see the, the crankshaft's all the way down. against the bore so it's not like cocked at all. It's nice and square. I usually just got a hold it, hold it down so it's pushing this thing down as tight as you can against the block and just some light taps to get it seated in there. She's in. Okay, we received the connecting rods on the bottom. Doing one and six at the same time, makes it easy. Put a little lube on the threads and just gonna tighten down on that cap. Just to make sure we got it right, I put two dots on the numbered sides of the cap and the rod. That way we know we got it right. 
just a, just some slight pressure here. And you want to make sure it moves like that, right? Just a little side plate. It should be around about eight to ten thou kind of thing. And he said if that sign plate wasn't there, there's something wrong, right? Yeah, it has to have a little bit of movement. Otherwise, you've got something tight there. The cap's on the wrong way around, or the bearings are the wrong size. OK, now all the connecting rods are in. The caps are on. Just torquing them down to the 37 foot-pounds. The shop manual says they should be. And we're rolling our way. Okay, next up, distributor shaft. So yeah, you can see that the distributor shaft will want to be in this orientation when it's installed with the number six piston at top dead center. Kind of got that offset keyway pointing right towards that thread hole for the distributor clamp. So go ahead and see what we're doing here. We just drew the shaft kind of up and out of the way. Then you got to put that gear where there's clearance on that cap and make sure that the keyway is pointed right towards that bolt there. And that's the process. See, so once it's all in place, then we can slide the crankshaft gear into where it wants to be. I want to pull a little more away from it so I can... Okay, going to try starting in here at 7 o'clock. See if we drive that gear home and uh, hopefully get that keyway point towards the bolt. Seen that position before. Same as it was, eh? Yep, it's really got to be a seven o'clock position. All right, just moved it one tooth over and I'm gonna see what that does for our fit here. There you go, perfect. That's it. Da, 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 da. Oh, no. All right, just in case that wasn't clear, I kind of did a step that I couldn't record there. Just tapped the, the gear onto the shaft, and then afterward tried to anticipate where that keyway would be in relation to these two gears as we tap this gear on. And uh, we got it one tooth out, just had to back this off move this a little further this way and push it back on and she was lined up. So that was what we did. We had to tap this on and then try to guess as this gear got pushed on. So here's the original oil pump out of our junk E-Type. My dad says it's a Hulbert Eaton fuel pump, no oil pump, sorry. Pump. Um, just gonna take it apart, clean it up, Probably replace the O-rings and see if it's within spec. So let's take it apart and see what it looks like. Okay, got the pump apart. It looks pretty good. I just wanted to do a few things that Jaguar recommend and make sure that the pump is within clearance. So here's the inner pump itself. You can see the two rotors that spin and create oil pressure. Yeah, I just tested in between the body and the outer rotor, in between the rotors, and just the top of both the rotors to the body. And this one's in spec, so I'm really happy with that. You can kind of see the general layout here, distributor drive, and this is the this is the gear that from that picks up the drive from that crankshaft and then it it powers the oil pump. Yeah, so just uh, gonna put this thing together, show you how that looks on the engine itself. Here's some of the lock tabs we ordered to finish this job. These are the oil um, the O-rings that we need for the job, and of course the pickup tubes and associated hardware. So let's see what it looks like on the car. All right, the oil pump for our junk E-type engine's coming together. So my dad wanted me to put a little Vaseline in there. That'll help it prime on the first start. 
and that purple stuff all around the edge there, that's a little bit of flange sealant. Hopefully get those oil pressures a little higher, but I was careful not to get any around the rotors. Uh, sealing the rotor to the body would be a nasty, nasty thing. You can see the bolts here that are going to hold the oil pump to the um, main cap. Two of them are dowel bolts here. They're special. And uh, you can see the main body here, the top of the oil pump. It goes on in this orientation, and I'm going to do that right now. We can't blame aftermarket parts this time, can we? Jeez, eh? Okay, gonna try a different oil ring. Found a green one in a paying set. I think green is an oil resistant. I'm not sure. Maybe it'll make our day a little brighter today. Again, with a little bit of silicone on there. Okay, fingers crossed on this baby. I'll try to hold it for you here. Oh. That's it, isn't it? That green one is the right size. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Also put a little silicone down there where it feeds the crankshaft. The gasket's got on both sides. Yeah, both sides, yeah. So that's going to really help seal this tube. Is that going to be good enough? Yeah, I'm going to put a little more on this just to give it a good seal up. Did you say moron? You call me a moron? Oh, extra. <laughs> extra stuff, yeah. All right, just tried to put the pickup tube in. It wasn't going in either. And luckily, one of the bottom end gasket kits had a slightly smaller o-ring you can see the difference there and I think this is gonna give me some success all right one last job before the junkie types bottom end is totally finished and that's check the end float this is done with a dial gauge here on the crankshaft and my dad's just gonna move it forward and see how much we get on those thrust washers what's hunting for focus there there we go. So that's it. That's uh, reading six or seven. I can't see. Well, it's six and a half maybe. So I think that's well within spec. Yeah, that's good. Right on. Okay, well that's it. That's a total success. Okay, that does it for the bottom end of my junkie type engine. Everything is in place and ready to go. It was somewhat of an unusual build because we used the original oil pump. That's not a normal thing to do. If this was a customer car, it would have a new oil pump on there for sure. Maybe that's the reason why these pipes went in a little tight, I don't know. But pretty much everything you're looking at here is original and exactly how it came off seven months ago. I reused all the nuts, all the washers. The only thing I didn't do is reuse the old lock tabs because that's kind of an old technology. But pretty much you can consider this a concourse build. I lose a point on those tabs, but that's about it. So yeah, really happy with the way this is looking. It's coming along nicely. Next episode, we'll get to the timing gear here on this side of the engine and put the oil pan on. But yeah, that's for the next episode and this one's over. So thanks for watching everybody. See you soon, bye-bye.